Hello our most valid student, my name is Confident, welcome to our revision session of the Mathematics N2 question paper and uh, this is the final exam which was written in February 2022. These are the exams that were postponed from last year in November due to COVID and now they were written in February. So I'm bringing you the revision of this paper so that you can also prepare if you are also preparing for your final exam. So as you can see, this was the question paper, uh, the Mathematics N2, it's a national certificate. And it was written, as you can see here, it says on the 1st of February, 2022 in the morning, X means the morning paper, and then it's a three hour paper. So some of the requirements here, they say you need two sheets of graph paper. So they will provide you with the graph paper. And then you need to provide your scientific calculator as yeah, that is very, very important. You need to have a scientific calculator. Now to begin with, I always emphasize on a few instructions which are very, very relevant for you as a, as a candidate. And again, to go through these in brief. As we say, this is a mathematics N2, time is three hours. The mark allocation of that paper is 100 marks. So for a few instructions here, you need to answer all the questions, read all the questions carefully so that you can uh, ensure that you don't uh, miss uh, or answer the questions in the wrong way. Then it says number the answers according to the numbering system that is used in this question paper so don't come with your own numbering because um, the numbering system that you must follow is the one that is used in the question paper and then say start start each question on a new page that is for neatness so you can um, understand that well and then says only use black and blue pen please on this part also no tipex Students like to use TPEX in the exam. The TPEX is not allowed. If you make an error, you just have to, using a ruler, you can scratch out uh, whatever you want to scratch out. And then it says write neatly and legible, meaning uh, ensure that you present your work in a neat way. Now, let us dive into this question uh, straight away. But just to... Um, mention a few things guys let me just pause here and bring in a few things to you to say if you are struggling with your mathematics and you want to ensure that you are prepared for your final exam you need then uh, to ensure that I assist you in your preparation for the final exam and how do you go about it uh, I want you to go to our website which is www.24minute.com you can see it at the beginning or at the end there is some information on our website uh, or our website and you will find a section which will tell you um, some classes which take place at different times so what I do is I bring in some revision session per topic so if you're having a challenge with one of the topics in your engineer in your I mean uh, mathematics and two what I will suggest you do is to go to the website, look at the topic and look at the date when that topic revision will take place. And then you book, book yourself for the class. It's a boot camp. And then you will be in a position to uh, get assistance. Of course, they come at a fee. You need to uh, join with a joining fee. Unfortunately, they, they are not free because of the resources that we need to pull in the classes together. And then also, if you want my test book for Mathematics N2, you can purchase it on Take A Lot. It is available. It comes already with videos which we will enroll you on in our Google Classroom. So when you purchase the book, you'll find a, a, a code or a link which you will send to us after sending us that kind of a code or password to say. We will know that you purchased the book and then we will uh, make you join our Google Classroom. So that is another way that you can do. The book also goes a long way in a way to assist you with your mathematics. So also don't forget our YouTube channel. You can subscribe to our channel whereby you find free lessons, lots of free lessons that can actually assist you. 
so this was the information guys that is important don't forget if you want to register you need to register now concerning this video or concerning this full paper i will do question one until i think it's question seven or question eight depending uh on the last part of this question and i will upload this whole memo on the youtube but it will be available for premium members in the beginning if you are not a premium member unfortunately you will get them a bit later why premium members is because they help uh, support this channel of youtube each and every month they do a contribution so we really appreciate their effort or we really appreciate their contributions hence we make latest videos such as these available for them so go over to our youtube channel look at the part which says um i think join and when you are able to join the membership and then you can choose which end level you want to join so these are the things guys just to keep this ball rolling that's what you bring to you now back to this part as i said question 1.1 it says here uh if we start answering this question 1.1 it says you are given log in base there is the base x of 27 is equal to 3 and then question 1.1.1 says write the above equation in the exponential form so this is one mark so it's a matter of writing that equation how do you express this statement as an exponent that's what they're saying so what are you given if i can just make it uh, bigger we are saying you are given log base x so you can see that this is your base and that is the number so how do you convert that so what you do is um whenever you're given that part you take that base it becomes square root of x that becomes the base and then you give it to the power 3 is equal to 27 that's how you solve it it's x it's square root of x so this becomes the base that becomes the exponent and this becomes the number so that is the expression that you you do whenever you're converting um, from what from the logs to the exponential form don't forget this becomes the base that becomes the exponent and this becomes the number so the conversions are done like that so this is the way uh, to do that so for example if i'm given let's say here i'm given um log sorry about that if i'm given log base a of b is equal to c how do i convert that into exponential form so it says a to the power of c is equal to b do you see how it goes so this is kind of the rule that you use when you're converting so that is that part and then let's look at the next question now which is question 1.1.2 if i can look at the mark allocation it says hand solve for x it says um how many marks is three marks there is the three marks there we are now solving for x but there is, there is a condition it says when we are solving for what uh, the x that we did in question 1.1 but it says here when you're solving for x it says not uh, means take not show the relevant steps so if you don't show the relevant steps they are going to penalize you some marks so if i can just do this let me look for some space just to say how will you solve for x given this particular question so what we have is we're saying x to the power of 3 is equal to 27 now what you need there are different ways you could have approached it one of the way is to identify that 27 if you use your calculator is 3 to the power of 3 you can see that this is 27 so if you can recognize that you will have x to the power of 3 is equal to 3 to the power of 3 that is now uh, interesting because there is a rule which says if you are given for example a to the power of x or let's use m is equal to b to the power of uh, of m 
the powers must be the same. Look at this. We have got power m, we have got power m. Then we can conclude and say, therefore, also a is equal to b. If the exponents are the same, then the, the bases are also equal. So what we can conclude on this is that if there is a 3 and there is a 3, and we can conclude, therefore, that this square root of x is equal to that number, which is 3. Do you see what I'm doing? But you know what does the word square root mean? If you are saying square root of x is equal to 3, to get rid of the square root, what do you do? You square both sides. So if I square both sides and I square both sides, now the square root will fall away to say x there if o is equal to 3 squared, which gives me a 9. So the x there is equal to 9. You can test that. What you do is you come to your uh, equation where you have that square root of x there in the x part. You put that 9 and you just see what it gives. So you're given log at the bottom. They say it's square root of x, which is our 9. And then you have got 27. The answer that it must give is 3. You can see that it gives us a 3. So that's how this question, you can solve it. Different ways, guys, you could have solved it. Another option here, I think you could have said maybe um, from here to say square root of x cubed is equal to 3 cubed. Remember, we say 27 is 3 cubed. But now you can also identify that the word square root means if you are given, if I just do this, if I give you that, it means bracket to the power 1 over 2. That is the square root. There is a 2. If I give you cube root like that, it means bracket to the power 1 over 3. So it doesn't matter. It can be the nth root. It means you put a bracket and the power is 1 over n. Now what about if um, I give you something like that to say, um, for example, if I say uh, cube root of uh, 5 squared, for example, you put a bracket, you put the 5 squared, and then you put 1 over 3. So that's what basically this means. So here, when we're given a square root inside, it means I'm given x to the power 1 over 2, because this is similar to that. And then in bracket, I've got the power 3 there is equal to 3 cubed. This is also using exponents. But now what you need to recognize is that this 3 is multiplying the exponent half. So you've got x to the power half times 3, which is 3 over 2, is equal to 3 to the power of 3. Now, how do you get rid of this exponent? What you do is you multiply by the inverse of that, which is 2 over 3. Remember, the 2 will cancel and the 3 will cancel. That's how we do it. But what you do on the left, you do on the right. So here you also multiply by an exponent of 2 over 3. Then you will be left with x on the left hand side. Now you can see that 3 cancels there. It will be now 3 squared on the other side, which means your x still remains as 9. Different ways, different approaches. It doesn't matter, but at the end of the day, uh, you could have gotten your x is equal to 9. So guys, that is that. Let's look at the other questions here. So that was 1.1.2. Now let's look at question uh, 2. Point, I mean 1.2. As we are continuing, I hope this guys is making sense. Now let's look at question 1.2. And then it says here, given log 10 is equal to 1 and log 2 is equal to that. And um, I think something, let me just quickly check the original question here. Uh, and then I'll give you that part to say log 3 is equal to, I'm just trying to get hold of the original question. And it says log 3 is equal to 0, 0.477. So this was missed out. And you can actually verify in your with a question paper for this current um, 
uh, February, you can just verify that. So this was what was given. You are given log 10, log 2, as well as log 3. So this is the information I given and then says not. Determine the following without the use of a calculator and show all the working. So we, you must not use a calculator. That's the first part. And you need to show your working. So now we want to find, remember you don't need to use or you must not use a calculator. But as I say, the moment they say don't use a calculator, that's when you take your calculator and find out what is the answer. Then from there, work towards that answer. So let's look at this. They are saying I must find log 60, like that. And what's my answer? 1,778. So I'm going to write here, this say the answer here must be 1,778. The other one is I need to find log uh, base 2 of 3. Log base 2 of 3 is equal to 1,5849, which is 1,585. 1,585. So now look at this, guys. I got my answers. I've used the calculator. Now let me work towards that. I think it doesn't need common sense. I'm into that because, in as much as you are using the calculator, you are just using it to your advantage. But when you're doing your working, at least you know where to go. Now, three marks is the first one, which means somehow, somehow you need a little bit of working on that part. Let's look at the first one says you need to find log 60 60 and you are given this information here so what do you know about log 60 log 60 remember you need to try to write it in a way which will be in terms of either 10 or 2 or 3 now you know that for me to get 60 i can say log put a bracket 60 you can find 60 by saying 10 times 10 times 6 is 60, but I don't have 6 there. But I know that 6 is 2 times 3. So 10 times 2 times 3. This can give me 60 because 10 times 2 is 20. 20 times 3 is 60. So you see, why am I using 10, 2, and 3? Because I'm given the 10, the 2, and the 3. And I must use that information to simplify. But now, continuing, you have a law on logarithms which says... If you are given log um, x, y, like that, in other ways, it's x dot y, meaning x times y is equal to log x plus log y. When it's multiplying there, you what you do is you add. So whenever there is a multiplication, meaning you'll be adding whenever you're using the um, laws of logarithms. So this is now log 10 plus log 2 plus log 3. I hope you see what's happening there. But now that's where the um, the interesting part now comes in to say where there is log 10, you must put 1. So there is the 1 plus where there is log 2, you put 0 0.301. Do you see the reason what they were trying to do? And then where there is log 3, you put 0 0.477. Now you can add that to say um it's a matter of adding remember they say don't use a calculator so you can kind of add this to say one comma three decimal places zero 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 comma three zero one zero comma four seven seven you just want to verify that answer again to say is it the proper answer now seven plus one is eight you are adding uh, there is a 7, 4 plus 3 is 7, which is 1,778. You can see that it actually matches that very answer that we got, which means you are in the right direction. I mean, you are actually guaranteed that your answer is definitely correct. So the first part is done. And let's look at the second one. Question 1.2.2. You need to find a log base 2 of 3. So if I do that one to say, what is log base 2 of 3? Again, remember, you need not to use the calculator. So now, you use the laws of logarithms. We just did, let me just check if we used it. This is the one that we used in this question. 
remember we said um actually nope that is a bit different but it's similar in terms of the base log base x of 27 so what you do here there is a special law or a rule which says if i'm given log base a of b and i want to introduce a new base in other words i want to change the base let's say i want to make it into base c i'll say log base c over log base c you see that now i take the b it will be the top one and that base a it will be the bottom that's how you convert it but now what if i wanted to convert everything in terms of base a remember i mean in terms of base b it is in base a now i want to convert everything in base b so i'll say log base b over log base b now the b goes on top and the a goes at the bottom that's what you do similarly if i come here to say i want to use or whatever i'm given remember either i used log 10 log 2 or i use log 3 in this case you can see that i already have 2 and 3 so i'm going to convert from base 2 into base 3 what will i have i'll have log in this case not actually base 3 i'm going to convert it into base 10 why base 10 because this log 10 is 1 you see that so it will be log 10 of 3 over log 10 of 2 sometimes you don't need to put that 10 you can actually ignore it it will become log 3 over log 2 and then when you continue what is log 3 remember log 3 is 0 0.477 over log 2 is 0 0.3 three zero one so that's what you're having but remember they say it you must not use a calculator at this stage you can leave your answer like that but to test it if you are correct what you do you just check it with the calculator to say 0 0.477 and then you divide that by 0 0.301 just to check if it gives you that answer that you got in when you're using a calculator which is 1.547 which is 1.585 you see that it does match what you're given so that is what you do guys whereby you are working with the calculator but without using the calculator i did um, a, a youtube a video which says how to cheat in math without cheating in math so you can cheat in a way that is actually acceptable so check that video on youtube now 1.3 simplify the following without the use without using a calculator is another one so it's two marks which means it's not a lot heavier here 1.3.1 .1, uh two marks i'm not gonna dwell much on this one but what i want to show you here is you are just using the laws of exponents meaning everything is multiplying but now you know that anything at the bottom if one for example 1 over a to the power of m is equal to to take the the a to the power m on top it will be a to the power negative m this one over it becomes that negative so that's what i'm going to use here whereby i'm going to take this a to the top now everything that is positive will become negative and anything that is negative will become positive so what i'll have is a to the power of 3x plus z plus 2y times a to the power of 5x plus 4y times a so it's going to the top now x is positive it becomes negative x z is positive it becomes negative z and 3y is positive it becomes negative 3y and then after that you finalize your answer to say remember the laws of exponent says if you are given a to the power of m times a to the power of n if the bases are the same like that you say a to the power of m plus n you add the exponents 
So I'm going to use that. But now when I'm adding them, I'm going to add them according to the like terms. Look at the axis. So I'm going to say here, a to the power of 3x plus 5x uh, minus x. And then after that one, I bring in the y. Look at, I mean, the z. I think the z comes early. You have uh, that part being uh, z and you have that part being z. So it will be plus z minus z. And then lastly, what I have is 2y and then 4y with the sign. The signs are important. And minus 3y. So I'm going to take these together as like terms, which is plus 2y plus 4y minus 3y. I think that. So it's a matter of just uh, collecting like terms, guys. Nothing much here which is a to the power 5 plus 3 is 8 minus 1, it's 7x. And then z minus z, it cancels. 2 plus uh, 4, it's 6. 6 minus 3 is positive 3y. You can use a calculator to verify that. So this becomes your final answer, which is 7, a to the exponent 7x plus 3y. It's basic exponents. You just need to know what you're doing in that case. This was 2 max, so I'm not going to how much here now next one is 1.3.2 and then let's look at the mark allocation of this one is 4 marks this is good 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 marks it's 4 marks so this is the last question it was out of 15 so let's see what it uh, is requiring remember they say I must not use a calculator now you can use a calculator on this one I just want to check you my previous videos where I show you how you can check if your answer is correct with the use of a calculator but because of time i'm going to show you on this one to say how do you go about this one so they say don't use a calculator that's the moment you use a calculator you take log five then you say square root of one to five equal to three over two so you know this will give me three over two plus again use the calculator to check what is the other one going to give that is what you do with the calculator. Log 2, uh, square root of 32 is giving me 5 over 2. And then when I add the 2, what will be my final answer? Which is 3 over 2 plus 5 over 2. So you see guys, I'm just working it in parts so that I can see what is that. So the answer here is 4. And the whole question is, let me go and find 4 in this. That is how you can see that using a calculator here is really something that you work to your benefit. So let's rewrite this. I'm given log 5 of square root of 125. Uh, this is so clumsy. Sorry about that. So log 5 of square root of 125 plus log 2 of square root of 32. Now let me show you now again how your calculator assists you here. Log 5. Now the wet square root, remember I said if you see a square root it means bracket and the power is 1 over 2. That's what you must do first. So what you have is 125 to the power 1 over 2 plus log 2 again it's 32 to the power 1 over 2 that's the first part to notice the next part is identify what is 125 these numbers in a way you need to get comfortable with such numbers for example 125 you must see that is 5 to the exponent um 3 you see that it's 125 what about 32 you need to know such numbers because 32 is same as 2 to the exponent, I think it's 5. That is 32. But the hint here is, look at the base. You need to express it in terms of that base. So find ways of expressing 125 in terms of 5 and 32 in terms of 2. The base will be your hint. I will show you why. So you saw that this log 5, 125 was 5 to the power of 3 
bracket 1 over 2 again plus log 2 and then we've got 2 to the exponent 5 and then there's another exponent 1 over 2 and these exponents what they are simple doing is they are multiplying so it's 3 times a half so you have got log plus 5 5 to the power you multiply 3 times half which is 3 over 2 plus log base 2 5 you're multiplying 5 times a half which is 5 over 2 then you have the law of exponents here but you can already see something coming up here to say this 3 over 2 is that one and this 5 over 2 you can see that is that one so but now how do you get into that there is a law which says if you're given log base a of a if the base and the number is the same you get a 1 and also that's the that's one part but before that there is a law which says if you are given log base a of b to the exponent m what happens is you take this m you drop it so that it comes in here before the log so it will become in this case m you can multiply it but it's, it's fine even if you say m log in base a of b but you must know that the m is multiplying there but you don't have to show that or you put a dot but it's not necessary so this law is what i'm going to use next to say the part of 3 over 2 will drop there the part of that will drop there so what i have is 3 over 2 dot I can, as I said, you can show the multiplication is not necessary. 5 log 5 plus 5 over 2 times log. I think there is an error here. You can see that it started as a 2, but now I made an error and wrote a 5. This is supposed to be a 2 there. So it's 2. And there is a base of 2. And the number is 2 so that's what I'm having then I'm going to apply this law at this stage to say if you see the base and the number matching it becomes a 1 so look at this there is the part 5 and 5 and 2 and 2 when it's like that what does it mean this is same as um, 3 over 2 times 1 plus 5 over 2 times 1. So what is 3 over 2 times 1? It's simple 3 over 2 plus 5 over 2. Remember they say don't use a calculator. Common base is 2. This is same as 3 plus 2. I mean 3 plus 5. And 3 plus 5 you know that is 8 over 2. And 8 over 2 the answer is 4. What did we get? we also got an answer of 4. Guys, that's what you do or that's how you go about whenever you're answering these questions. You can see that it doesn't need a rocket scientist for you to solve this. You just need to follow the rules. Follow the rules. When you get hold of the rules, it will be easier for you to answer this. What am I trying to say? I'm saying to you, if you are struggling in this content or in this area, definitely you need to enroll for my classes. So that you can be able to easily go through this you just cruise in this area because i deal with it in a very simplified way so that whenever such questions come you don't even think you are on autopilot i hope guys this is of help to you now let's come again into question number two and see how far you can go about as you are revising thank you